strive to, to deliver products and services to our customers uh, that exceed their expectations. As digital semiconductors approach a billion transistors on a single piece of silicon, you have to be able to figure out how to test that really rapidly for throughput and, and relatively cheaply for customers. <coughs> But at the same time, you have to maintain a very high quality level. So our team has to become incredibly inventive about how they partner with design and how they partner with the ATE manufacturers to optimize tests across the board. As process technologies change, the defects that are occurring in semiconductors are, are changing rapidly. As we move forward, we're going to move to copper bump stacked silicon where you stack multiple dies on top of each other with, through silicon vias. Each one of those brings a, a new challenge, a new technology that we have to figure out how to test and test efficiently to be able to deliver the product to market in a cost-effective manner. We're on that silicon as soon as it leaves the set houses. Once that material hits our dock, it is immediately received. Program management and PTEs are notified material goes into our vertical lift module, which is a centralized inventory location, and that material is tracked and available to our engineering community 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The vertical lift inventory module is a state-of-the-art inventory um, tracking system that we implemented here at Building W. And really the intent of this is to have traceability of where parts are, who's got those parts checked out, when are they due back in? The other thing that we've implemented with the vertical lift inventory system is an RFID tracking system. And that's really helped us facilitate the check-in and check-out process. Our number one goal on this is to make sure that the engineers can efficiently get parts out. That's a real value, having all that material centrally located so that not only engineering can access it, but also our test techs. Our average customer return rate right now is sub 100 dpm actually approaching 50 dpm on most production devices. That's pretty much world-class performance. It's enabled because we're partnered here with the designers. Uh, we have applications engineering there. So as the customer has an issue, we can both respond to the issue and correct it. As the designers have issues or want to make tweaks or changes, we can respond to it quickly. We have quality technicians, engineering techs, business process analysts, logistics, shipping, receiving personnel, as well as material personnel, all located in the same facility. It really allows us to collaborate, establish priorities with our engineering teams, and also streamline our processes across all of our functional areas. So as you can imagine, we have high dollar capital equipment that we're trying to maintain, and the key is to make sure that that uh, equipment is not only utilized, but is available, and that we have very high uptime with that equipment. Every week we get together with our engineering community and schedule the use of the testers every day of the week for every hour of the day. And the reason why we do that is to optimize the use of our equipment. One thing that helps us do that is by allowing India and Singapore PTEs to do remote testing during our off-core hours so we maximize the use of our equipment. We have a centralized room on the test floor that houses all of our test hardware, whether it's load boards, probe cards, probe interface boards. And we have a similar check-in and check-out system in that area so that at any point we know what um, hardware is in the room, if it's checked out, who's got it, and then when it's returned, whether it's a working board or a non-working board. So one of the things we do during the characterization phase is to test our devices so over pauses, voltage, and temperature corners. That ensures our devices are manufacturable and ensures that we can sustain the, the variability that we would see in a production situation. One of the reasons why we test over temperature is ensure that we meet all of our design criteria over the potential use cases. One of the things we, we try to accomplish on this test floor is to emulate and simulate what we'll see in the high volume production situation. The SLT allows us to simulate the same environment that a customer would see on their phone, both the hardware and the software working together. By being able to test in that environment after the ATE test has taken place, we're able to find any software defects that may be uh, occurring in the hardware. We can sample thousands of devices in a short period of time, uh, and by testing a large sample, we're able to find defects that may occur in a small percentage of our devices. When you talk about player analysis, the, the key things that they 
focus on our new product development, what's wrong with the silicon or what's wrong with the design, and that's where the fib comes in. If the designers can't figure it out, we can go in and edit the circuit and then make uh, the changes the designers want without having to go back through a design spin. The design spin, best case is like 18 weeks, you can do a fib edit in like a couple days. So that's a big time to market or a time to solution and uh, improvement that we can work through. The other thing that the failure analysis team does is they facilitate yield improvement with our suppliers. Being able to have maximum yield, being able to supply across multiple foundry partners really enables Qualcomm to get product to the customer as fast as possible with high quality and very high reliability assurance. We will test both package level devices as well as wafers. That is key for us in terms of our partition of wavy package air devices. Well, there's two main functions that take place in the quality area. The first is really related to outgoing quality, to make sure that the parts that we're testing here on the test floor meet the quality standards that are required for our customers for either engineering sampling or customer sampling. So as parts are coming back, we're, we're making sure that the parts are reconditioned and in a point that we can retest those parts um, to determine what was the failure that the customers were seeing and how we determine the root cause or how do we direct the failure analysis on those parts that are coming back from our customers. We are one of two carbon screening facilities in San Diego. What that means is that once we sealed the cargo and it's shipped from our facility to the airport, it goes directly onto a plane. It doesn't go through any other screening processes. This is a definitely an advantage to us as well as our customers because it minimizes the handling of our devices inside the package. We look around the world. ATEs are pretty much standard. The handlers are pretty much standard. So what's different? Our people are they're very innovative. They're very unique. They're really able to try proactive solutions that end up saving time, money, cost, uh, time to market, uh, all the facets that go into making a good product. And our ability to partner here in San Diego with uh, the designers and the applications engineering team gives us a very rapid feedback loop of both what design needs and what the customers need to optimize, test, and then turn it out really quickly into a manufacturing solution.